Perhaps foremost, he wanted me to find a way to reach out to the Muslim world and uh, engage much more with dominantly Muslim nations uh, to help them uh, feel good about uh, their historic contribution to science and engineering, science, math, and engineering. A man named Al Khawarizmi was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, a Muslim, worked in the golden age of Islam. He's the guy who came up with not just algebra, but algorithms. Without algorithms, you wouldn't have laptops. Not all religions are the same. Not all prophets are the same. Not all ideologies are the same. Of course, they're all bullshit, but there are different kinds of bullshit. And if your agenda is to make everything look the same, to equate everything, you need very urgently <laughs> to find some way to make Islam look better, to make Muslims look better. And apparently, one of the central pieces in the campaign to make Islam look better is the Islamic Golden Age. Will it make Islam golden? Does it? Well, no because it is not based on facts. Most of the achievements that are claimed in the name of the Islamic Golden Age are not actually the achievements of Muslims. This is not a big secret. Anyone can check out some basic historical facts and see that many of them, you see, especially in the field of mathematics, are actually the achievements of Hindus and of Jains in India before Islam. Um. And around that period, that 300 year period, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Baghdad. It was completely open to all visitors, all travelers, Jews, Christians, uh, doubters, which today we might call atheists. They were all there exchanging ideas. All of them. All of them. And it was that period where you had the advances in like engineering and, and biology and medicine and, and, and mathematics. All right? Our. Numerals are called what? Arabic numerals. Say, hey, stop and think about that. Stop and think. You know, who's, who, as in America, do we pause, take pause at this? Why are they called Arabic numerals? Okay, they fully exploit the, the discovery of the zero, create a whole field called algebra, itself an Arabic word. Algorithm is an Arabic word. All this is going on, and it's all traceable, not to some long thousand year tradition in, the, in Islam, it's traceable to this 300 year period. This 300 year period. <laughs> oh my god. This guy has decided to shame us into admiring the golden age. Condescending us. Did you ever stop and think about that? Well, I have stopped. And I did think about that. And here are my conclusions. All of those advances in science, that's bullshit. We had very, very few advances in science. Uh, what was that? We created a whole field called algebra. What the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? It was there before. Arabic numerals, that is some criminally misleading the audience right there. Fully exploited the discovery of the zero. Well, the Hindus also had a zero in their numerals that the Arab copied. By the way, do you know how the Arabs call those numerals? They call them Hindu numerals. Adad al-Hindi. Fucking ridiculous. Le let's talk about the civilization from which the Arab borrowed. The civilization which the Arabs have buffered from the Europeans for centuries. Why do you think that Columbus needed to go and find a way around them? Let's talk about India. So let's do a short historical recap. It's time. And this is actual history and not some bullshit narrative promoted by the Saudis. So it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna mix it up with truth. With facts, Islam starts its violent spread in the 7th century. al khwarizmi the Muslim mathematician, has worked in the 9th century. This is the guy glorified as the inventor of algebra, of algorithms. Our numeral system first appears in India between the 3rd and the 4th century. And negative numbers appear no later than the 4th century. And we know that from records 
found in a Pakistani village called Bakshali. Those records are known as the Bakshali manuscripts. And Pakistan is known as the land that the Muslims have conquered from the Hindus to a horrible, epic proportion genocide, killing millions. The Bakshali manuscripts reveal early Hindu knowledge of geometry, of algebra, of square roots, fractions, linear equations, quadratic equations, and many other topics as well. The Hindus had that knowledge at least 300 years before the spread of Islam. Ever heard about the Hindu Golden Age? No? Okay. Around a hundred years later, in 500 CE, about the time, a Hindu mathematician called Aribata is discovering a new approximation to the pi. He is working on trigonometry, he is describing a sine function. I mean, this guy is relentless. And he has an algorithm to extract a square root, an algorithm. Hmm. So algebra has been developed and used centuries before Islam. Algorithms have been developed at least a century before Islam. Those are historical facts. However, for some reason, when someone mentions the history of algebra, it is almost always in the context of the Islamic Golden Age. So you are only 1,322 years off. Not bad? Not bad start there. Uh, talking of maths, by the way, a man named Al-Qawarizmi was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, a Muslim, worked in the Golden Age of Islam. He's the guy who came up with not just algebra, but algorithms. Without algorithms, you wouldn't have laptops. Let's talk about another Hindu mathematician. His name is Brahma Gupta. And in the late 6th century, he's developing a new algorithm, an algorithm to solve a quadratic equation. And he's doing this, this work, which involves algebra and algorithms, two centuries before al khwarizmi has invented algebra and algorithms. Anyway, who among us doesn't like trigonometry? I don't, but the great Hindu mathematician Varamira apparently did, because he came up with that formula, and also this one, and even that one that I remember from my high school. Moving on with the timeline, we are at the mid-7th century, and Bashkara, a Hindu mathematician, has just developed a new approximation to the sine function. In parallel, let's follow some developments in Arabia. Muhammad has kicked off. He and his friends have Islamized the Arabian Peninsula. They are violently emerging out of Arabia and attacking the Zoroastrians. They are an ancient, ancient civilization that will never recover from this encounter with Islam. Never. Although some of them find refuge in India. It's safer there. Why? Because it's easier to coexist with Hindus than with Muslims. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. It's no big fucking secret. After defeating the Zoroastrians, the Muslims can focus on the Byzantines. Those are the Eastern Roman Empire, a Christian nation which actually controls the heart of the ancient Christian world, which will be eventually Islamized. We now consider Turkey and Egypt and Syria as Muslim lands, but they used to be Christian before Islam. Eventually, they will all be Islamized, but for now, still in the 7th century, there is another problem, which will be our main focus here, and that is the isolation of the West, the isolation of Europe. Now the Muslims are in control of the trade route to the East, to India, the trade route of the Silk Road, that's over. They are also in control on the trade route to the South, through the Red Sea, to the Indian Ocean. So, basically, no more trade with India, no more connection with China, that's all gone. Secondly, they are suffocating the trade within the Mediterranean by piracy, by enslaving European merchants, almost completely annihilating all trade in the Mediterranean. So all of the main highways of the medieval times are blocked, and we cannot overstress how much economy is important to civilization, how much commerce, how much trade is important to the exchange of ideas, to specialization and to urbanization. When those processes stop, society regresses. The intellectual development stops as a result of the economic chokehold. Europe remains isolated for the next 10 centuries. And this largely ends as the European try and do find a way around the Muslims. A major central motivation for the European 
to explore the world is to find a way around the Muslims. The Portuguese tried to get around Africa and Columbus tried to, to circumnavigate the world. So throughout those 10 centuries, some information does slip through the cracks of the Islamic Caliphate. But when it does, it is always after years of processing by the Muslims and the Europeans come to know this information and innovation, not as Hindu or Chinese, but as Muslim, as Arabic knowledge. And they call it by Arabic names or that they refer to it as Arabic, algebra, algorithms, Arabic numerals. But it ain't really Arabic, it's Hindu. Professor U.N. Kennedy from the University of London, an expert on the Islamic Middle Ages, writes in his book, The Great Arab Conquests, quote, In antiquity, and again in the High Middle Ages, the voyage between Italy and Alexandria was a common thing. In early Islamic times, the two countries were so remote that even the most basic information was unknown, end quote. Early Islamic time to High Middle Ages time, that is the era of the Golden Age, of the Islamic Golden Age. So what was the Muslim Golden Age? It was the time of Europe isolation, at its height. Clearly Islam has a problem today, but there have been periods when Islam was at the vanguard of modernity. Uh, you know, it was the place that preserved Aristotle and preserved science. Mm. So if it was Islam that was the problem, how come it was okay then? In other words, that would suggest that it is the social and political conditions within Muslim societies or, the, you know, the, 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 the people now. In other words, it, clearly Islam has been compatible with peace and, and, and progress, well, and well, it is compatible with violence, I would argue, well, just like all religions. Yeah, well, up to, up to a point, I would say that... Continuing a fact-based story, hundreds of years ago, in the 9th century, in India, lived a Jain monk called Virasena. What was he doing? He was working on logarithms. He was coming up with a better, improved, more accurate pi approximation. And did any Muslim who lived in the Golden Age find a better pi approximation during the Golden Age? No. Are you surprised? I'm not. The next person who got a better pi approximation since Virasena did was Mahad, Madhava of Sangarma in the 14th century. And that was also in India, obviously. During the entirety of the Islamic Golden Age, many, many innovation in mathematics continued to pour down from India, while the Caliphate itself, the Golden Age Caliphate, provided only crumbs. I will not go over all of the Hindu and Jain mathematicians, but I will do some name dropping, like Bhaskara II, Shripati, Nemichandra, Manjula, that, that sounds like something you should put an ointment on, Snir, Sneridara, Mavira. If you want to know more about them, because I'm not going to go into each, of, each and every one of them, Wikipedia them. A man named Al Qawarizmi was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, a Muslim. Okay, let's take a look at the timeline. Al-Khwarizmi, 830 CE, he is the Islamic hero that the Muslim Golden Age campaign is glorifying as the inventor of algebra and algorithms. But now we all know better. What did Al-Khwarizmi do and was he important? So, yes, he was very important, but mainly as a preserver of knowledge, as a transmitter of knowledge. One of his duties in the library of Baghdad where he worked was to translate the Hindu and Greek manuscripts into Arabic. So he gathers all of this information and writes a very important book. And as you know, a good book must have a good name. A girl has no name. So he writes the Compendious Book of Calculation by Completion and Balancing. It's a nice which name. Is, which is a great collection of all of the mathematical knowledge that he gathers and in which he very methodically described how to apply algebra to practical issues, how to actually use and solve algebraic equations. But he didn't invent algebra. He didn't invent any notable formula, equation, mathematical series or function. Nothing really. And go look it up. 
Alcoarismi's book, The Compendious Book of Calculation, is often cited as a proof for Alcoarismi's ingenuity. But he just wrote about those stuff. He used them. He didn't invent them. For example, if I, if I take a commercial clock and then repackage it, it's not as if I invented it. Let's end this with a quote from Bertrand Russell. Arabic philosophy is not important as original thought. Men like Avicenna and Averos are essentially commentators. It showed no capacity for independent speculation in theoretical matters. Its importance, which must not be underrated, is as a transmitter. The Muslims have butchered the Hindus, and now they are taking the credit for those pagans' achievements. Is there anything less moral than this? They are not celebrating the culture of the pagans. They hate them. They are just taking credit for their achievements. So next time that someone wants to talk about cultural appropriation, about how offensive it is to wear a Mexican costume or an Indian costume, explain to him how real cultural appropriation looks like. Tell him the story about how the Hindu Golden Age became the Islamic Golden Age. You tell him about that story.